and my score in the bio section ended up being 99th percentile. And looking back, if I had to take the MCAT for the first time and I had to choose only one set of books, I would probably go with wherever you are, whenever it is. If you clicked on this video, that means you have a goal and you're one step towards achieving it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, my name is Jenna and basically I created this YouTube channel in order to help anyone who wants to go into med school with some tricks and tactics. So, of course you know that the most important part to get into med school is doing the MCAT exam. That seven hour long dreadful exam that will determine whether you're going into med school or not. No pressure. And of course, in order to excel in an exam, you would want to know which books you're supposed to buy. Mainly, do you want to get the Kaplan set or the Princeton? Personally, I believe that every student takes in knowledge on a different wavelength. And what suits someone better might not suit the other person. I took the SATs after taking a course with Princeton and I got a really high score. And of course, I thought that for the MCAT, I want to get Princeton books as well. But I did end up studying from both Princeton and Kaplan. And looking back, if I had to take the MCAT for the first time and I had to choose only one set of books, I would probably go with Kaplan. But it is important to know that every student receives information on a different wavelength. So what applies to me does not necessarily apply to you as well. So I will be giving you some factors that will help you determine which book set suits you better. First of all, it depends on how much time you have. The main difference between Kaplan and Princeton is that Kaplan is straight to the point. This is the piece of information, here you go. Princeton, on the other hand, is kind of like the teacher who's having a conversation with you, going in depth into the subject. So if you're very low on time, I would advise you to go for Kaplan so you'd have more time in order to focus on the practice touch. And you will realize, especially with your chemistry and physics books, if you're studying from Kaplan, your progress will be faster. However, you will eventually reach a steady point. So for someone who has time and they're determined to get the 99th percentile, mainly they go for Princeton instead of Kaplan. The second factor that plays a role is your background knowledge. So if you're someone who has a deep background knowledge and you're sure of it and you're confident, then I would advise you to go to Kaplan instead of wasting time on details in Princeton. If you read both books, then you would realize, uh, for example, Princeton can talk about antibodies and it goes on and on and on about each type and what each type does. And in Kaplan, they tell you that these are the antibodies, you don't really need them for the exam. But if you are aiming to get the 99th percentile and you do have the time, then I would actually advise you with Princeton because I did get a question about antibodies that year, but, that is, but the chance of getting that question was extremely low. So I was lucky I had actually read the Princeton books. But here's the thing, and it's something that I actually love about the MCAT, is that it depends on analysis. If you just have the knowledge and you don't know what to do with that knowledge, you won't really get a good score. When I took my MCAT, the biology section was full of questions from a course called Cell and Molecular Biology, which I hadn't taken in university. And if that happens to you, don't freak out. Just read the text because the MCAT gives you room to do so and analyze and based upon those, answer those questions. And my score in the bio section ended up being 99th percentile. So don't freak out, whatever happens. Now, of course, there are plenty of resources to use, but I'm focusing on the ones that I actually use and I spent months with, living with, eating with. Um, <laughs> it's a tough journey. But anyway, I studied for the psychology and sociology part from Khan Academy. They have those really nice videos. They're short and simple with drawings and the explanation is really good. And the benefit from having videos is that you can actually put the speed on times two and go through the faster if you're low on time. And finally, the practice tests. That's the most important part of your preparation for the MCAT. I wouldn't really advise you to spend most of your time getting information from the books as much as I would advise you to use those information in the practice tests because this is what will actually prepare you for the MCAT. And another thing is that you have so many resources for practice tests, but the practice tests offered by AAMC are the most representative because at the end of the day, they're the ones that put the test. And I wouldn't really advise you to spend so much time on Princeton and Kaplan practice tests. However, if you want to put your knowledge in place, 
after finishing from the books, do one practice test of Princeton because it depends more on your knowledge than actually being representative of the MCAT. And the two sources for practice tests that I would recommend is AAMC and Next Step. You could either alternate between the two where the last practice test you do before the MCAT is that of AAMC, or you could do all of Next Step and then move on to AAMC. However, I would prefer that you alternate between the both because even though A and C is more representative, personally, I felt that it was much easier than the actual MCAT, and I felt that next step was actually harder than the MCAT. And not only are the exams on next step hard, but they are in increasing difficulty. So the first practice test offered free online is the easiest of the 10, and then they go in increasing difficulty. If you could fit all 10 exams from next step with those of A and C, then that's great. But if you feel like you're just rushing through them, I would prefer that you get the first six exams and solidify the knowledge you have in your mind. So basically you have more time to see why you answered wrong, not just what you answered wrong. And that's a common mistake a lot of students do. So see why you answered that question wrong and try to avoid that in your next exam. And that way you will solidify your knowledge when it comes to the material in the next exam as well. So that's it for today. I hope this video helped you. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If not, you could give it a thumbs down, but please do leave a comment on what you would have liked to see instead. And if you do have any questions or any suggestions, leave them in the comments below or contact me on my Instagram account. Also, don't forget to subscribe, turn on your post notifications button. And yeah, that's it. See you next time.